Have you ever taken a look at the lighting in your images and just wished there was some sort of mechanism, like a dial, where you can easily adjust things like shadow brightness or retaining your highlights, you know, to even things out? Oh, wait, there is. All right, kidding aside, what I'm really talking about is when you're trying to perfect it in camera, meaning that you're making all sorts of adjustments to your light to make these sort of changes. Well, as much as a simple dial or even a slider would help and be really nice to have, it's just not realistic. But in this video, I'm gonna go over a concept that by applying it to your shoots can act almost as if it was this magical dial to help make it easier for you to get your lighting precisely where you want it to be. Lighting needs to only do a few things. Create dimension, separation, texture, and emotion. But what's kind of relieving to know is that your lighting does not need to achieve all of these at the same time. It's really about understanding the subject we're shooting and choosing the best lighting that enhances that subject. And one major way we can think of our lighting to decide something like that is how to control contrast. And I know that may sound basic and not even surprising to you, but what does it actually look like to do that? Remember that food loves directional light, but the problems that usually arise in getting the light the way you want it to look is when you found, let's say, that optimal direction of light for your scene, it can sometimes come off as either too shadowy or too dark, or on the other hand, too flat or even not shadowy enough. So when you think of controlling contrast, all that is, is getting the shadows to a point where you get that right balance between the shadows and the highlights so that it achieves either one of the four aspects I mentioned earlier, and that's always gonna depend on what you're shooting. All right, so one way to really see how your shadows are affecting the overall contrast is using a good old fashioned test by turning your images black and white. I know, not very ideal for food photography, but again, it's a great way to see how contrast affects the overall image. So in this example, I set up the two lights so that it produces soft flat lighting. I had one key light with a soft box and then another one pointing up as a bounce light for fill. And then in the second scene, I turned off the fill light and just had the key light lighting my scene. Now, if we put these two images next to each other and we convert them to black and white, you can see the differences in just the contrast alone. The image with just the key light source on, the shadows are much, much darker compared to the highlights and overall has a rich contrast. In the other image, shadows are a little bit closer to the highlights in terms of brightness and therefore has less contrast. This comparison between shadow and highlight is what is known as the lighting ratio. Now you may have heard this before, but hear me out. The lighting ratio can be regarded both as a concept and a technique. The concept though is what we're gonna be focusing on here because the technique actually requires a lighting meter, which is a device that measures the exposure value of a given light at a certain point in space. And it's used to calculate the ratio numerically almost with exact precision. Now, I do not own one of those because they're quite expensive, nor do I expect you to have one yourself. So instead, as a concept, the lighting ratio simply describes the differences in tonal value. And that's it. So if we revisit the question of having a dial to control contrast, this can be that dial. Whether you're using fill cards or additional flashes, it generally helps you attain more of that control over the look of your images. And I don't know about you, but that's exciting to know that's even possible. So what does this look like in practice? Well, I'm gonna show you two main examples, one with moody soft lighting and then one high key hard light scene. And then for each scene, we're gonna follow closely just a few simple steps to get what we need. Number one is to cut out all of the ambient light. We're gonna do this simply with our camera settings. And then number two is to position and dial in the key light. And then number three, we're gonna strategically position a second light source to create fill light. This is what's gonna control our shadows and therefore our overall contrast. And then number four, we're simply gonna make adjustments if needed. In these examples, I'm gonna be using another flash. So I'm gonna be adjusting flash power. But if you're using a fill card, you can still try this out. It will just be a matter of adjusting, you know, the distance, the angle, and as well as the size of the fill card. All right, let's go.
times where we like where the key light direction is. Like we don't want to change it. For me, I love going somewhere between side and backlight, so it comes in diagonally. But what this means consequentially is that the front of the subject, whatever it is, is going to be dark. And yes, I can just add a simple fill card and fill in that light and call it a day, but I prefer adding an additional flash to simply have more control over that ratio between highlight and shadow. I think at first glance, the two images look very similar, even with the additional flash added. But if you look closely at the image with the additional flash, it has more detail in the shadows. In fact, for the image without the secondary flash, if I were to click on the exposure warning here in Capture One, it's basically telling me that these shadows are in danger of being clipped or having no information in them. So even though these two images look very similar, the image with the added flash gave this image more balance in terms of contrast. And yes, I'm aware that it's purely subjective at this point, but even just as a best practice, I think retaining shadow areas like this can go a long way when you take this into post-production or even when you take these images into print, which is a whole other monster in and of its own, but this is always a great place to start. Now, if you're wondering, does this mean I have to get two flashes to get great images? No. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. Whether you are a one light show or use multiple lights, by thinking in terms of light ratios, rather than just a cookie cutter way to fill in light, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that, this can open up more possibilities in what you can do, not just with your shadows, but with your lighting overall. All right, give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss out on future videos and announcements. And speaking of announcements, sign up for my email list because there is where I will make official announcements via email. In fact, I'm in the middle of making a food photography lighting course and it's been so much fun scripting and planning this thing and I'm getting really excited to announce it in the near future. So make sure to sign up so you don't miss that. Other than that, as always, I hope you're doing well and I hope you're safe and uh, talk to you next time. Thank you.